Hey, my name is Luke, aka Instrument Maniac, and this is my 2021 instrument collection. If you've been watching my past instrument collection videos, uh, this will be a little bit different. In the past, I would cover a song using all the instruments I have, but this year, I thought I'd take it back to the basics, and I would just show each instrument and give one quick fact about it. So without further ado, here we go. To start us off, here is the Woodwind family. This is my very first instrument. It is a C flute that is a Gemeinhart, and I started playing flute when I was 10. This is my nicer C flute. It is a pearl C flute, and I mostly record my flute videos with this one. This is my Yamaha C flute. I got it for $20 on Craigslist, and I use this one for outdoor events, weddings, and gigs. This is a piccolo that is a Gemeinhart, and I used to play it in pep band in high school. This is my alta flute that is a pearl, and it is probably my favorite member of the flute family. This is a bass flute, also by Pearl, and this is the newest member of my instrument collection. This is a keyed flute from the 1850s that's on loan to me. Uh, this was around when Abraham Lincoln was still alive. It's a Chinese dietze flute. Uh, that I bought in San Francisco when I presented at the American Geophysical Union conference there. A wooden B-flat clarinet by Selmer, and this is actually the first instrument that I bought on Craigslist. A metal clarinet by Gretsch. This is not a soprano saxophone. A tiny E-flat clarinet by Pedler. This thing is one of the hardest instruments to tune. An alto clarinet by Vito, and this is actually my favorite member of the clarinet family. A bass clarinet by Yamaha. In 2009, I did a bass clarinet cover of Lady Gaga's Paparazzi, and that year at the Grammys they actually used it in one of the Grammys ads. See if you can find it. A soprano saxophone by Yamaha. This is not a golden clarinet. Trust me. A Yamaha alto saxophone. I started learning this in seventh grade because people made fun of me for playing flute, but in the end, it's the reason I started learning more than one instrument. C melody saxophone. It is between an alto and a tenor saxophone and is in the key of C. A tenor saxophone by Yamaha. This is the saxophone that I'm the least comfortable with. An oboe by Lara Lee. Back in high school, I had an oboe and I used to make these oboe tips videos and I seriously thought I was going to be an oboe influencer when I got older. How the times have changed. A bassoon by Linton, considered to be one of the worst bassoon brands, but this thing actually plays pretty decently. A wooden Sopranino recorder by Mook. I used to play in an early American music group and would tour around the United States with this little guy. A series of recorders by Yamaha, a Sopranino, a Soprano, an alto, a tenor, and a bass recorder. I bought on Craigslist for $50 because this woman was moving, and this is probably one of the best deals I've ever found. This is the first Native American flute that I got. It is in the key of G, and it is from the amazing company High Spirits. A Native American flute in the key of D, flute in the key of E, both of these were part of an ad campaign I did for High Spirits Flutes. Uh, if you're interested in trying a new instrument, definitely check out their instruments. They sound great and they're definitely easy to pick up. They're not sponsoring this. I just love their products that much. An electronic wind instrument by Akai. This is what the keyboard is to the piano. Uh, it's kind of like a flute clarinet synthesizer. And here is the string family. A violin by an unknown maker. Uh, this is actually over a hundred years old and it is the oldest instrument I actually own. It was likely made by an apprentice given the misshapen scroll and the ink splot on the back here. Currently I'm using Ava Parazzi strings. A viola by Stringworks in Wisconsin. I was actually running late to a music gig and I had to stop by a store to buy some reeds and I saw this in the consignment section I ended up buying it and I was even more late to that gig. A half-sized cello by Engelhart. Originally I bought this to be my touring cello, but sadly touring is on hold, so maybe one day in the future, 2021, 2022, I can actually give it a whirl. A full-size cello by Maple Leaf Strings. Back in 2009, I thought I was just gonna pick up the cello and it'd be an easy thing to learn. Little did I know that cello is one of the hardest instruments to learn. My string setup is A and D are Larson's and G and C are Spyrocore. A three-quarter size upright bass by Shen. Surprising amount of cello technique actually transfers pretty well to bass when you're sitting on a stool. An acoustic guitar by Alvarez, on long-term loan to me by my chemist friend Jean-Paul, so thank you Jean-Paul if you are watching this. A nylon string guitar by Rodriguez. This was actually a gift to me from my parents for graduating high school, uh, so if you're watching this mom and dad, uh, thank you again. An electric guitar by Epiphone. I bought this in college when I thought that I was going to be an indie rock star. 
which uh, things didn't really pan out that way. An electric bass by PV, also known as the PVG bass. Not only is it this awesome green sparkle, which you probably can't see, uh, it's got extreme neck support because it's got a carbon fiber neck. Who thinks of this stuff? A soprano ukulele by Martin, made in the 1950s, and uh, I used to play this when I would tour with that early American group all across the US. A tenor ukulele by Lanakai. After the indie rock thing didn't work out, I bought this and thought I was gonna be an indie folk musician, which also didn't end up going anywhere. A banjo ukulele by Luna. This is actually my favorite sounding ukulele. I love its mini banjo vibe that it gives off. A mandolin by Washburn. Originally I bought this thinking it would help me learn violin. Turns out it didn't. Violin is just still ridiculously difficult. A banjo by Mitchell. This thing has a beautiful sound, but actually my favorite part about it is the wood staining on the back. A lever harp by Stony End Harps. This is made here locally in Red Wing, Minnesota. Uh, it's a family-owned business. Uh, they actually make it out of a barn. The upper floor of the barn is the instrument showroom, and the lower floor is actually where they make the harps. A double-strung lap harp, also by Stony End. I bring this with me when I go travel for work or when I'm on tour. An auto harp by Oscar Schmidt. This is one of the most versatile instruments around. The type of pick you use has a huge impact on the sound quality. This is the brass family. A cornet by Kahn. Uh, the cornet is pretty similar to the trumpet. It just has a little bit quieter and narrower of a sound. A single French horn by Getson. Um, I actually was in northern Minnesota on a tour and I stopped by a pawn shop because I really had to use the bathroom and I saw this in there and it actually played pretty well so I decided to get it. A trombone by Yamaha. Um, I actually got this again a great deal on Craigslist. I wanted to use it in 2020 but I never got around to it so maybe in 2021. The percussion family. A snare drum by Pearl. This was actually the first percussion instrument I ever got. A ride cymbal by Zildjian. I love adding brushed ride cymbal into pieces to give that percussive moving feel. Hi-hat by Sabian. Even though I've had this for a number of years, I still have such a hard time putting this together. It's like a freaking Rubik's Cube. A pair of egg shakers that are actually mini maracas. A single tambourine, I use this for pretty fast and percussive playing. A double tambourine, I use this more for kind of giving that full tambourine sound, mostly on downbeats. A large triangle, when I toured with that early American group, I actually had to learn how to play Cajun triangle for some of the songs, which I've now used in many of my videos. My tiny little triangle, when I was on tour, I would actually have a mid-song reveal where I would pull this out and start playing Cajun Triangle on this tiny thing. A pair of castanets. Originally, I bought these to add some Spanish flair to my tracks. A pair of mounted castanets. Unfortunately, I suck at playing castanets, so I decided to just get the mounted gun. A djembe all the way from Senegal. Uh, this is actually a gift to me from my friend Kathleen, who is doing some research over there, so thank you again, Kathleen, if you're watching. A pair of sand blocks. I got these to use in my Thomas covers, and and they've gotten more than their fair share of use, as you've probably seen. A set of chimes. These sound incredible, but they are ridiculously expensive. A vibra slap. This is actually supposed to be a more sturdy replacement to the traditional jawbone, which is literally a jawbone of a donkey where you play the teeth and they rattle. A guero. Uh, traditionally, these are made out of gourds, but unfortunately, I could only find a wooden one. A cowbell that's brushed metal. Um, this is the most extra cowbell I've ever seen, which is probably the whole point of a cowbell. A kibasa. This version of the kibasa was actually created in 1960 by the founder of Latin percussion. A set of sleigh bells. I put off buying these for so long, considering how infrequently I will use them. A washboard with a cymbal mount. I got this after collabing with Jack Amblin. I was so inspired. Uh, turns out this is incredibly difficult to play and Jack, you have my utmost respect. A wood block by Timber. Um, this is an incredibly artisanal wood block. It's beautiful looking and it even came with little foot pads. A bike horn. I bought this specifically for my birdie cover and I may never use it again. A train whistle. I actually used to live next to a train store and I just walked over there and bought this one day. A playable conch horn shell. I bought this for my Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening cover and it's still to me one of the coolest natural instruments that I've ever found. And here are the mallet family. A glockenspiel. The term glockenspiel is actually German for to play the bells. A collection of chimes that can be hammered. 
Uh, these are almost too shrill to use in covers, which is why I don't use them that much. A two and a half octave vibraphone. To date, this is probably the best deal I found on Craigslist. I got it for only $100. And finally, my miscellaneous instruments family. An accordion by Scandali. This was also bought in that phase when I thought that I was gonna be an indie folk musician. Just really did not pan out at all. An upright toy piano by Schoenhut. After all of these years and a whole video on it, I still can't say that name correctly. A digital piano by Yamaha. I use this when trying to arrange larger orchestral productions. A small MIDI keyboard. This is mainly what I'm using when I'm transcribing those Thomas themes by ear. And finally, I saved the best for last. Uh, this is the funniest and most frustrating instrument I own. This is the automatone, and it never fails to put a smile on my face. And there you have it. That is my full instrument collection as of 2021. I fully lost track of how many I own actually while making this. Um, and if you're one of the five people that is still watching, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you checking this out, and I realize it's a little bit more rambly uh, than I usually am. And if you like watching this and you want to see more of me, you are welcome to come join the bandwagon. Click subscribe and hit that notification bell so that YouTube lets you know every time I upload a new video. It takes one second and it really helps this channel grow. If you want to see me use these instruments in future videos, you can check out my YouTube at youtube.com slash instrumentmaniac, my Twitter at instrumentmania, my Instagram at LukePK, and finally Patreon for sheet music, backing tracks, full mp3s, and a holiday card that I will send you around because I have way too many of them. I also have a Discord server link below and I try to check it a few times a week and chat with you guys. And with that, that concludes this year's video and thank God I don't have to do this for another year because this is one of the most tiring videos to make. I will see you next week.